This is a practical, it's a required practical and it's for GCSE biology. We're looking at the decay in milk. Now normally milk has a type of sugar in it called lactose and what happens is it gets broken down into lactic acid. It's broken down by enzymes that you will find naturally in bacteria which naturally live in milk. And what's going to happen is the lactose is decayed and as it turns into lactic acid, basically the pH of the milk decreases. So we're going to investigate the decay of milk at different temperatures. But well, we need to be clear what are our independent variables and what are our dependent variables. Well, if we're changing the temperature, the temperature is what we're controlling, so that's our independent variable. And we're going to measure the change in pH. However, we're going to measure that over time. So our dependent variable is actually the time for the change in pH. So how are we going to know when the pH of milk has changed? Well, we're going to use an indicator. Now, we're going to use something called Cressol Red. And if you put Cressol Red into an alkali solution, then it turns red, as its name suggests. And when it becomes acidic, it turns yellow. So how will we measure the change in pH? Because there's a little bit of a problem here. When we take milk and then we add Cressol Red, it's already slightly acidic and so it naturally just turns to yellow. And therefore, even if we allowed the milk to decay, we're never going to see it change to yellow because it started yellow. So what we're going to do is this. We're going to put our, we're going to get our milk, we're going to get our Cressol Red, but then to make it be red at the beginning, we're going to put some sodium bicarbonate, which is alkali, and that shows us that we're going to have it alkali, and then when we do get a colour change, it will turn to yellow. So let's just go through the experiment and make sure we know what we're doing. What are the control variables? Remember, a control variable is something that you used to call things that you keep the same, for a fair test. So we are going to keep the type of milk, the volume of milk, the volume of uh, sodium bicarb. We are going to keep all of those things the same. The only thing we're changing is the temperature. Why are we choosing five different temperatures? Well, if we choose five different temperatures, we get five different uh, amounts of data. We get five different results. Five different results can produce a fairly decent graph. It's the minimum amount of data points needed for a graph. If we've got a graph, we can then read off different temperatures that we haven't actually investigated and get an idea of what the result would be. Complete the table to indicate what instruments will you use to measure the milk, the Cressol Red and the sodium bicarb. So this is where we need to be looking at resolution. Remember your resolution is the minimum interval of your instrument. So for example, you wouldn't use a 250 mil beaker that went up in increments of 50 mils to measure 0.8. That would be silly. You might use a syringe that measures to a tenth of a mil, for example, to get 0.8 mils. How will you ensure the temperature for each temperature interval investigated remains constant? So this is why we use a water bath. And remember, AQA aren't just going to want to know what you use, they want to know why you use, it. you use it. Now you can create a water bath with a hot water kettle and a beaker. However, that's not going to maintain the temperature over a long period of time because it's going to cool down. What you want is a thermostatically controlled water bath. So if the water gets too hot, it monitors it and it reduces the heating setting so that it comes back down and it maintains it within a, um, a range. Why was the sodium carbonate added to the milk? Because we wanted to make it alkali so that when it produced lactic acid and turned acid, we saw that change. 
describe how a preliminary investigation <clears throat> found that 0.8 mils of bicarbonate was needed. Well, we actually did have to do a preliminary investigation. And what we did was we um, <clears throat> put the Cresol Red in with the milk, it turned yellow, and then drop by drop, we added sodium bicarb until it turned to a red colour. And then we knew that was the minimum amount needed to make it look red, so that as soon as it started making uh, fatty acids, lactic acid rather, it would turn yellow. What was the range in this experiment? Well, we are going to use 10 degrees, 20, 30, 40 and 50. How did we choose this range? Well, we know that it's enzymes in the bacteria that are creating the lactic acid. They are responsible for the fermentation of lactose. We know that the, that the bacteria are going to be destroyed at temperatures above 50 and so basically we don't want to use any of those temperatures, it's pretty much going to be a waste of time. We went down as low as 10 because even at 10 degrees, I think the time taken for the milk to turn from, uh, the milk with the Cresol Red to turn from red to yellow is going to be a few days. So when we're looking at a range for an experiment, we're looking for something that's going to give us different results, but achievable in the time that we've got in our laboratory session. So for example, we wouldn't choose temperatures of 39, 40 and 41 because they are unlikely to give us results, a time difference that is different enough that we can plot it on a graph and call it a, some valid results. How can you make your experiment more reliable? Well, reliability is ensured by repeating your experiment. How does that ensure it's reliable? With more than one result, you can take a mean, not an average because there's three types of average, you can take a mean. You can notice anomalous results and choose to repeat those again uh, to see if they give you the same value or if they are truly anomalous. How could you make your experiment more accurate? Accuracy is achieved by getting closer to the true value. So, when you found, for example, that you, the uh, quickest amount of time for your uh, fermentation to happen was perhaps between 30 and 40 degrees, what you can actually do is then repeat the experiment, but instead of using 10 degrees, 20 degrees, 30 degrees, 50, you might choose to use 30, 32, 34, 36, 30 and 40. And then perhaps if you've got a result that was around 36, you might just decide to make your intervals even closer together in terms of the temperature that you tested. And that rounds up practical 10. So just to recap, at five different temperatures, you're gonna take five mils of fresh milk. To that, you're gonna add 0.8 mils of sodium bicarbonate to make the milk slightly alkali. Once you've added that to the milk, you're then gonna add one mil of Cresol Red, shake it up, and then you're gonna leave it at a different temperature, 10 degrees, 20 degrees, 30, 40, or 50. You're gonna time how long it takes before the milk with the Cresol Red in it, which does actually appear red, turns to a yellow color. Don't forget to label all your glassware with a permanent marker. And here's another way, if we had time, we could measure the production of lactic acid because what we can do is we can slowly measure the pH using a data logger over time. Here we've just rinsed the data logger, the pH probe, with distilled water to make sure it's clean and we're placing it in the milk that's been fermented. As you can see the reading on the data logger there is about 4.3. It's oscillating around 4.3. I'm going to rinse it again. I'm going to wipe the uh, probe clean and dry and then I'm going to measure fresh milk. How did it start off? In it goes and if I just look at the data logger I can see there that the pH is resting, it's still gaining and it's going to come to a rest at around pH 6. This would be perhaps a more precise way of measuring the change in pH over time. 
Of course, I mention that because the apparatus and techniques are the drivers behind the practicals, not the practicals themselves. So you'll see for this one for apparatus and techniques, one, use of appropriate apparatus to make and record a range of measurement accurately. Now, clearly, even at Key Stage 3, you'd be able to suggest apparatus to measure length, to measure area, mass, time, and temperature, even volume of liquids. But would you know how to choose apparatus to measure the volume of gases and to measure pH? So that is the slight uplift in this specification, and you need to be aware of that in case you're given instruments to use to conduct an investigation and you would have to explain how they were used.